Hello again. I hope you're doing well. Today we are going to be diving into how the imbalances in the crown chakra can affect your relationship with money. So I've created this framework to help people change their behavior and their mindset when it comes to money. I use the chakras to show people how you can drop away scarcity and lack ways of thinking and create greater prosperity for yourself. That's not just more money, more zeros, but also how you feel inside, which to me is way, way, way more important because when we feel good inside and we have a centered approach in how we're looking at the rest of the world and our money, we make far better decisions and we're able to be more in the flow of, of life where we're going to be looking into the divine lens, right? The crown chakra. And it would be helpful if you haven't listened to the other episodes to go back and listen to all seven. They will give you a much greater understanding of the framework that I write about in my book, The Mindful Millionaire, that's coming out in June of 2020. You might also like to take my money and chakra quiz, which you can find on wealthclinic.com. And so just as a recap, the chakra system is the way that the spirit moves within the physical body and the energy body and how the spirit animates form. The chakras can be imagined as wheels of spinning energy that help us create calmness and balance and openness that allow us to have optimal human functions and avoid stagnation and blocked energy. Now, the physical body as a result of these chakra centers can be affected. And as you learn more about them, they start to really speak to you and help you understand perhaps some of the physical maladies that you've been facing in your lifetime and how they can translate to the emotional things that are going on uh, inside your mind, inside your body. So we're taking some liberties and in, in understanding how these parts of our being connect together. And again, we're looking at the divine lens, the crown chakra. The seventh chakra regulates how you see yourself in relation to the divine. It's located at the, at the crown of the head, just above it. If you're struggling with this chakra, you may be in conflict when it comes to merging your humanness with your divine connection, which causes you to question your wholeness and that all parts of you are perfect as designed. And it helps us to accept and allow and integrate all the parts of ourselves into one state of being. As you embody and integrate your sense of a wholeness, your life begins to reflect this back to you. And your money is a reflection of what it means to be in the world, but not of it. The crown chakra is associated with consciousness, with awareness of higher consciousness, of connection with the formless, the limitless. You have this strong sense of purpose, meaning, and direction, which all get translated and channeled into your relationship with money. When the crown chakra is out of balance and scarcity is present, there's a tendency to do one of two things. One, engage in economic bypassing, where you treat money as mundane and unnecessary. This can cause a person to always be struggling financially, yet being able to take care of your humanity by earning and saving and spending and investing wisely. Uh, allows you to live in this very aware state of consciousness. In this case, money becomes a tool of understanding, compassion, social connection. And the more that those with the balanced crown chakra are in flow with our money, the more easily we can create a loving world that complies with our highest goals and wishes. The second possibility is to engage in spiritual bypassing, which is when a person tends to overanalyze to the point of negating any possibility of a higher power. And while I doubt anyone's going to watch my channel or listen to this podcast if they are completely pushing away their divine connection, but it's good to notice because you may have folks in your life that are feeling this way and there may be times where you just are really not sure, you know, what to believe in. And that's, that's part of life. That's part of, I think, the journey that we go through. 
But in this case, doubt, which sometimes accompanies extreme pessimism, causes a person to intellectualize everything to the point where there's no possibility other than cause and effect. And when someone is spiritually skeptical, doubt can play a big theme in their way of seeing the world and that prevents them from, from recognizing their own abundance and prosperity. From the teen years to the early 20s, we're busy creating the beliefs that we have about how we fit into the world, our roles, capabilities, capacities, our spiritual connections and expectations for the future. It is also a time when the prefrontal cortex of the brain is developing, which is connected to our consciousness and our understanding of this greater kind of meaning of life, awareness. And so depending on what happens to us throughout our childhood as part of the six other stages, we may find ourselves struggling through this time of our life. While it's possible to have a sense of enoughness at the core of our being, many people have not gained the awareness of how to even begin to explore this development. This is how I think of my own teen years. There was just so much confusion. There was so much focus on fitting in that I dropped away any interest in spiritual teaching and, and kind of decided to become an atheist, that there was nothing. It was the here and now, and I needed to take care of myself, and nobody else was going to. And so you can see how that defines, that starts to define the sense of self that we're creating in our imagination, and, and that becomes our reality. So when aspects of ourself have not developed due to blocks that occur earlier in life, we can end up struggling with making peace with ourselves and our past to the point where we cannot complete the process of, of self-maturation. Rather than this face of life being filled with excitement and creative purpose based on our own individuality, instead we find ourselves questioning the ways in which we can fit in. Unfortunately, it's easy to become hijacked by the goal of fitting in rather than individuation, which is the ideal state of maturing. Without a strong sense of self-awareness and one's own guiding values and principles, it's difficult to create a sense of feeling like you're enough. Instead, you end up feeling like you could never be enough, especially when you're comparing yourself to others and so focused on what it takes to fit in to the ideals of the culture and society rather than your own guidance from within. It's during this phase of development where you have the capacity to generate devotion, inspiration, prophetic thoughts that transcend the limited nature of physical reality. However, in this time of social media and an extreme focus of fitting in, few have the mental space in which to engage you know, in finding themselves and, and following this guidance. And so on the other end of the spectrum, the individual relinquishes the practical human experience to the point that they're not actually connected to the physical body and responsibilities about finance, right? So it's like, that's not important The you know, God and energy is going to support me and pay my bills. And there's this sense of releasing all that, that being human requires of us. And you can imagine how that looks in someone's life, right? And, and you may recognize this for yourself. It's like, I will be taken care of. And yet, you know, that's not really the times that we live in. Like we are being invited again and again to take responsibility for ourselves, to be able to instill those, those values in our children so that they can take really good care of themselves. Like it's not about abdication, it's about taking more responsibility for what it means to be human. When the crown chakra is balanced, you feel open to the idea of undoing the known and dropping away the old so that you can become something new. Here, a person feels strong spiritual connection while at the same time confident in their wisdom as a result of study, contemplation, and even financial management. This leads them to create and live by beliefs that support prosperity and abundance in their daily life and promotes a sense of freedom when it comes to money. These are often, I think, of spiritual teachers, perhaps, who are consistently walking their talk and not ashamed of the, of the ability to create financial freedom for themselves, or people that are maybe in the business world and you see them making choices again and again that are coming from a place of abundance. A few quotes that I pulled from Marianne Williamson, which uh, she's very inspiring to me. Here's someone who's 
lived a life of great spiritual discovery and then decided to run for office both in California and then recently for presidency because she felt like she wanted to take what she had learned about the inner journey into the outer world. And that takes a very brave soul, whether you're for her politics or not, the idea that she was willing to put herself out there in a world that isn't always so open and receptive to these concepts. I'm just blown away. And I, I actually got to meet her recently. She said, a queen is wise. She has earned her serenity, not having had it bestowed on her, but having passed her tests. She has suffered and grown more beautiful because of it. She has proved she can hold her kingdom together. She has become its vision. She cares deeply about something bigger than herself, and she rules with authentic power. She also says, spiritual progress is like a detoxification. And finally, she said, when a woman, and I would add men in here too, conceives her true self, a miracle occurs, and life around her begins again. And this has really been my ex same experience. Like, the more I've dropped away all the stories of limitation in my life and in you know, my body and my mind and my spiritual connection, the happier I've become and the more real I've become to myself and, and this true self deep inside. And then from there, I get to reinvent the things that I want to create in my life. And so I'd love to share a story that I feature in The Mindful Millionaire with Sheila. And she came to me and she was in great frustration. She felt like she just couldn't take it anymore. That the way she'd been living her life, even though she felt like she had tried a lot of different things, but these years of avoiding her emotions, avoiding her past, and, and really avoiding personal responsibility about her finances had just collapsed. And she was like, I just can't do this anymore, right? I need to take more responsibility, but I don't know how she mentioned that when she tried to do her taxes or pull information together, she would find herself just shaking because of the anxiety inside of her when it had to be, you know, time to focus on her finances. And so Sheila grew up as a minority in the Northwest in a very religious Christian home. And from her earliest memory, she she remembered spending a lot of time at the church where her grandfather was a pastor before her uncle took over. Her parents were expected to help fund the church, contributing as much of their money as possible. And they ended up giving so much of their money to the church that they lived at the poverty line willingly. Her father had a stable job, made an acceptable income, but all the money, all the spare money went into the church. And as a result, she sensed that her family was very poor, not because they didn't have food on the table, but because her parents deprived her of her most basic and pressing needs. She remembers that they didn't have, you know, fresh food in the home. They would buy canned and powdered milk. They would not buy her clothes. Her, her shoes were meant to last her for years, so they'd buy them way too big, and she'd grow out of them, and they'd be holy over, you know, it was just this sense of just severe deprivation. Um, her clothes didn't fit. They were tattered. Like, it just gave her this sense of, like, severe limitation, and at the same time, with all the religious values, it was like the most important thing is your connection to the divine and God, and God will provide. And yet when she got into her adult years, she realized that there had been a lot of mixed messages in her home and they had caused her to live a certain way, even being homeless for, for many years, not because she wanted to be, but because she couldn't make enough money to take care of herself and her young daughter. She found herself in struggle again and again with finances and it wasn't until we came together where she started paying attention to all the resentment that she held back to her parents and, and not feeling like she was important, not feeling like she was being taken care of. And also the fact that she had some different views than the church did. And when she tried to speak up about it, she was uh, criticized and ridiculed. And so always feeling like she needed to go off the beaten path and find her own connection to spirit, which she had done in her, in her later life. But the thing that wasn't working anymore was her financial relationship. 
And so as she was able to go into these relationships with her family and understand kind of where the disconnects were, where things didn't align, where she was harboring resentment and fear and guilt and sadness and even shame. Shame is like really common to come up in this in the crown chakra as well as with the root chakra. Interesting that they they are connected and that it's like a circle, a cycle. So as she was able to strip away and, and heal these wounds of the past and drop away the confusion and the frustrations, she started to notice that this person, this true self was coming to the surface that, you know, granted, it didn't mean that she solved all her financial problems all, you know, right away. But what she did was she started taking greater responsibility. She felt comfortable looking at her finances. She knew that it was something important to her. And so the more she dropped away these old beliefs and patterns, the easier it was for her to step into a more healthy and loving and supportive relationship with money, where she ended up moving and trying to starting a business. She's been trying different things, but the point is, is that she doesn't feel frozen anymore. And she's continuing to learn how to take better care of herself in this lifetime. So for you, you may resonate with a story. You may notice something else. Marianne Williamson is famous for sharing that quote, like our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And I think that when we connect into the divine and we're really centered, you know, and, and balanced in the chakras, we realize that there is nothing to fear but fear itself, that the fear that if we could be bigger and grander and more powerful in the world, like that is nothing that we have to fear. But the fear keeps us from thinking or keeps us thinking that, that we aren't that, that we shouldn't be that. So what I'm encouraging you to do in this moment is to notice that you are a very powerful being, that you are a human being having a spiritual experience and a spiritual being having a human experience. You are both and. And I invite you to spend some time contemplating your connection to the divine and how that channels through you into your relationship with money and your human experiences. You can also take some time to uh, do the meditation for the crown chakra. You can think about the ways that you can take really good care of yourself and um, celebrate what it means to be human and what it means to have this beautiful, deep connection to source. Namaste.